Isaiah chapter 49, chapter 49, having a few problems with the PowerPoint, so we, we hope that you'll bear with us, uh, uh, having a few problems with, uh, w- with the microphone, uh, not, not any problems with Mike, but some with the microphone. Uh, so begin with me, we're talking tonight about God is faithful. And I, I want you to stop and think, and let's take a look at ourselves uh, as we look at, at Israel, uh, as we look at uh, uh, the apostles, um, and, and see truly how faithful God is, that God is faithful. Isaiah chapter 49, beginning in verse 1 down uh, through verse 6. Listen to what God says. Listen to me, O islands, and pay attention, you people from afar. Boy, just right there, he's, he's pointing to us. He's, he's pointing to us. He, he's not just talking to Israel. To talk to Israel, he just, he'd just have to talk to the people that were right there. But he, he says, listen to me, O islands, and pay attention, you people, peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb. From the body of my mother, he named me. He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he has concealed me. He has made me a select arrow and hidden me in his quiver. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will show my glory. But I said, I have told in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and, uh, and, and vanity. Yet surely the justice due to me is with the Lord. And my reward is with my God. And now says the Lord who formed me from the womb to be his servant... To bring Jacob back to him, so that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God is my strength. Think about our lesson this morning. The Lord is my strength. And he said, is it too small a thing that you should be my servant? To raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel, I will also make you a light to the nations, so that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. He's talking to Israel, and through Israel, he's talking about Jesus. How many times was Israel unfaithful? How how many times were they unfaithful? If if you want to just read one book that that shows you repeatedly how many times they were unfaithful, read the book of Judges. I mean, they they were faithful while God blessed them, and and, and then they got comfortable kind of like uh, Uzziah, and and, and they want more, and and so they sell themselves... Uh, into idolatry. And then they cry to God for help and, and God will send a judge and, and, and he will deliver the people and, and, and then they will prosper uh, for 20 years and, and then they will, will fall away again. It repeated the cycle over and over again. How many times was, was Israel unfaithful? And with regard to that, all the way through to us and until the end of the world, I want you to listen to 2 Timothy chapter 2. We don't talk as much about this as, as maybe we should. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 11, 12, and 13. God is faithful. Listen to what it says. It is a trustworthy statement. I like it when God says something like that. Now everything God says is a trustworthy statement. But he says, now people are talking about verses like this in, in the day that, uh, that God had Paul write this, and, and he's wanting Timothy to know it, but it, it's in the Word of God, so it, it's already a trustworthy statement. But God says it, this really needs to be noticed. It is a trustworthy statement. For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he, will also, he, uh, he also will deny us. If we are faithless... He remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. God is faithful. He will take us back again and again and again and again. You remember when Peter asked the Lord, How many times shall I forgive my brother if he sins against me? How many times? Till seven times. And Jesus said, depending on the translation that you're reading from, until 70 times seven or until, uh, you know, how, however many it is. But, But really he's saying uh, until infinity. And and this describes God. As often as we turn back to God, He accepts us back. God is faithful. 
And he tells us that re repeatedly, whether we're talking about uh, his, his faithfulness to us to, to accept us back, or, or whether we're talking about temptation, uh, or, 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 or whether we're talking about uh, acknowledging whether we have sinned or not, that, that, that if we confess our sins out of 1 John chapter 1, God is faithful to, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. God is faithful. Even if we are not faithful... It doesn't mean that God saves us in our unfaithfulness, but it means that God is faithful to what He has said. He cannot be otherwise. That's, that's who God is. God is faithful, and He's faithful to us, and, and we, we need to trust in that. Look at the, the apostles. God calls Matthew, and, and we could go to several different places in the Gospels and read about it, but I want us to go to Luke and, and, and notice what's happening. God is Jesus is calling his apostles. Now his, his choice, his choice is the very best that he could find. The very best that there, there was. And, and, and it proved to be the case. I mean, I mean we, 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 we see that in the scripture. But, but I want you to notice the combination of, of people that he's bringing together. Jesus calls Matthew. Luke chapter 5, beginning in verse 27. And after that, he went out and noticed a tax collector named Levi sitting in the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he left everything behind and got up and began to follow him. And Levi gave a big reception for him in his house. And there was a great crowd of tax collectors and other people who were reclining at the tables with them. The Pharisees and the scribes began grumbling at his disciples, saying, why do you eat with and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered and said to them, It is not those who are well who need a physician, but those who are sick. Jesus called Matthew. Matthew worked for Rome. He worked for Rome. He wasn't even a tax collector for, for Israel. He's a tax collector for Rome. He, he works for, for the occupying nation. He was an assessor and a collector of taxes. That meant that, that he had instructions from, from, from Rome what, what to collect, but then if he wanted to assess you more, he could. And, and that's how many of these people became extremely wealthy uh, and on top of the fact that they were, were collecting taxes for the occupying nation. People didn't like that. We don't like taxes today. We don't like taxes. We don't like people increasing our taxes. We, especially, you know, we're, we're, we question people that, that will do that. And, and, and I understand that. You talk about somebody's money, you get real close to them real, real quick. And you can get under their skin real quick. We don't like paying taxes. We don't, we don't mind paying for things that we see the, the good of. But, but if we feel like things aren't being handled right, and to pay money to an occupying nation. But Jesus calls Matthew, and the Bible says Matthew followed him. In fact, Matthew's so excited about it that, that he gives a reception for Jesus at his house, and he invites all of his friends. He wants to, them to know what's happening. He, he, he doesn't just slink away in, in, in the night. And I don't know if, how Matthew felt about all of that. God doesn't tell us. But he's, sit, he's sitting there collecting taxes, and, and Jesus looks at him, and, and he calls him. And, and he left his tax collecting work, and he follows Jesus. Hmm. But Jesus is not through. He, he called twelve, didn't he? He calls twelve. One of the, one of the last ones that, that, that he mentions, of course, uh, the last two, uh, he, he mentions one who was by the name of Judas, and, and then he mentions Judas Iscariot, the one who, who would... Who would betray him? But right before that, uh, n number ten, when 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 we're reading it in the Gospel of Luke in chapter six and and in verse uh, uh, fifteen, it says that Jesus called Simon the Zealot. Simon the Zealot. Simon the Partisan. Now, now this man was an uncompromising. In, in fact, the in, in the Greek it will say that he was. Uh, a Canaanian. He, he was from the city of, of Cana. It's interesting, that's where Jesus did his first miracle. 
That, that may have been one of the things that, that got Simon's attention. But, but he, was, he, was, he, he was more than, than, than just an Alaskan. He, he, was, he was more than, than just a Texan. I mean, he, 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 was, so, he was so uncompromising in, in his, his feelings, even down to, to the city that he was born in, that he was defensive of those people. And, and he would do anything within his power to throw off the occupying force. Now, if that's Rome, that's fine. We'll take on Rome, the strongest, the, the, the strongest country in the world at that time. Yeah, I, I mean, if it's Rome, we'll take on Rome. But if it had been Jerusalem lording over Cana, he would have been saying, well, if it's Jerusalem, we'll take on Jerusalem. Because first and foremost, he was a Canaanian. Not a Canaanite. Now, he, he, he didn't live in the land before, but, but he's a Canaanian. And he's called a zealot. He's called a zealot. That's not a bad word if it's used in a good way. God tells us that we should be zealous. We should be zealots of good work. He tells us that, 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 that in talking about Jesus, that, that his zeal for his father's house consumed him. Consumed him. And, and God tells us about that in, in prophecy, but we see it whenever he's cleansing the temple at the first of his ministry and then at the end of his ministry. Because that, that was the house of prayer. That was a place where people were supposed to feel closer to God, but, but yet they had, had put up so many barriers and barricades to, to the common person to being able to come in and, and do that. And, and, and it ceased being that. It was a den of thieves. And, and to the people that ruled there. So, so zealot is, is, is not a, a, a bad word. It, it's a, a strong word, though. This, this man comes the closest to being a, an... an unashamed politician, but he's not a politician. I mean, he speaks his, his convictions and, and, and everybody knows it. Hmm. I wonder how that's working already. You got Matthew over here on this side, and all of Matthew's friends were, were who? They, they were tax collectors. They're working for Rome. And, and now, you, you've got over on this side, you, you've got Simon the Partisan. Wonder how they, I wonder if these guys put their sleeping bags next to each other when they're out on the road. wonder what kind of conversations they had. Interesting. Interesting. Two, two men, I mean, it, it would have been, by the time Jesus is through, it's going to be like having, having, having 12 apostles that, that are made up of, of, of strong re Republicans, Democrats, Independents, uh, what, what, whatever, what else is there out there? Libertarians, you know, what, what, whatever. You, you've, you've got all, all of these people with, with strong, passionate feelings. And Jesus brings them all together. He calls Peter. You remember we talked about that last week. Or two weeks ago on Sunday night. He, he calls Peter. And, and, in, and in Luke chapter 5 and verse 8, when, when, G, when Peter first sees that, that this one that they've been hearing rumors about tells him and the other men in, in, in their boat to, even though they've been fishing all night, tells him to, to lower their nets down again. And, and, and they catch so many fish that, that other boats have to come in and, and, and help actually rescue them because it, it's swamping their boat. Their boat is about to sink. And Peter realizes the one who, who he, he's been hearing about truly is the Lord. He's, he's miraculous. Has miraculous power. And Jesus is going to call him. But before Jesus calls Peter, Peter's first response is he, is he runs up to Jesus. He falls on his knees before Jesus in worship. And he says, Lord, depart from me because I'm a sinful man. He becomes the most outspoken of all of them. But, but don't you imagine that some of their discussion, because we do have, have God gives us uh, an insight into some of their discussions, like at, at the Last Supper. You remember the Last Supper? 
And all, all the apostles are there when, when, when Jesus is, is instituting the Lord's Supper, and, and Judas is there. J- Judas is there. And, and, and Jesus, uh, he's, he's washed their feet, and, and, and he's about to tell Judas to go out and whatever he's going to do, to go out and do it quickly. But, but Jesus said, one of you are going to betray me. They're going, no, that couldn't happen. Well, one of us, and, and, and so they, 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 they pass the word around to, to John, uh, who, who seems to be the, the quietest and, and the humblest of the group. But, but they pass the word on around to John. They say, John, ask, ask him. John is, is closest to Jesus physically, reclining uh, against Jesus. And Jesus said, it's the one who's dipping in the sop. The one who will dip, dip in the gravy with me. The one who takes his bread and, 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 and dips it into the sop, he's, he's the one that will betray me. And they can all see that, but they don't make the connection. Among all these people that Jesus has chosen, he's chosen a thief. They didn't choose Judas because Judas was going to betray him. He chose Judas because Judas seemed to be one that should be chosen. He wasn't predestined. Now, now what would happen to him was predestined. To the betrayer, it, it would be better that he never be born. To the betrayer, he's going to go out and he's going to hang himself. But God didn't make Judas betray Jesus. But, but in, in that discussion right there, when Jesus begins from there to talk about the Lord's Supper, they're already arguing among themselves which, which one of us is, is going to betray Jesus. He's just said it's going to happen. And, and then it, the, the discussion goes from that to which one of them is the greatest. And Jesus is trying to teach them to be servants. And He's trying to teach them that, uh, uh, the self-sacrifice that I'm going to give myself. And, and, and they're arguing about which one of them is the greatest. And, and can you see these personalities coming to play in that? Which, which one of us? Well, no, I wouldn't deny Him. It, it's not me, is it, Lord? I wouldn't deny Him. Oh, no, I wouldn't deny Him either. And, and, and then they go from there to, to maybe they're saying, well, let me tell you why I wouldn't deny Him. Let me tell you why I wouldn't deny it. Because I'm not a tax collector. I'm a partisan. I would die for our country. How do you think Matthew would have felt about something like that? He would have responded. And, you know, I, I don't know what the discussion was, but you're going to find several times that Jesus is saying, don't be like the world. Don't be like the world. Because the, the world enjoys lording over other people. He said, it won't be that way with you. For whoever will be great in the kingdom will, has to learn to be the servant. Whoever wants to be first is going to have to learn to be last. So Jesus, He calls Matthew and Matthew follows Him. He calls Simon, the, 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 the zealot, the partisan, and, and, and Simon follows Him. He calls Peter and, and, and Peter says, go away from me, but then He follows Him. And he's not through. Even after the church began, you remember whenever he called Saul? You remember when he called Saul of Tarsus? On the road to, to Damascus? What was, he, what was he going to Damascus to do? I mean, what had he taken as his life's mission? To hunt down Christians, both men and women, breaking into their houses, tying them up, taking them back to Jerusalem, where they're going to be put in prison and, and many of them are going to be put to death. He, he was there whenever Stephen was, was stoned to death and, and, and he's leading the group because they all lay their coats at his feet signifying the, the, his leadership. And what is it that he says about that in, in Acts chapter 26? And he said, when we had fallen to the ground, in verse 14, Acts 26 and verse 14, and when we had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me, in the Hebrew dialect, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. And he said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and stand on your feet. For this purpose I have appeared to you, to appoint you a minister and a witness not only of the things which you have seen, but also to the things which I will appear to you. And from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you, 
uh, uh, rescuing you from the Jewish people and from the Gentiles to whom I'm sending you. To open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the dominion of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith in me. He's the enemy. He's the enemy. And God makes him the teacher. He said, I want you to follow me. You've, it's been appointed for you to do these things. This is God's will for you. And Saul says, all right. And he gets so excited. He gets so excited and, and, and it's not long. He's, he's teaching everybody in Damascus to, to the point where the Jewish officials in Damascus are going to have him killed. And, and he, he slips out. By night, the, the Christians in Damascus have, have accepted him. And, and they lower him out out of the wall, out of a window on the wall, in a basket at night. And he escapes. And, and he goes to Jerusalem. How did the church feel about him? We asked earlier, I wonder, wonder how Simon felt about Matthew. Or how Matthew felt about Simon. Or how Peter felt about uh, any of the rest of them. The church in Jerusalem doesn't like the idea that, that Saul has become an apostle, that he's become a Christian, that now he's a teacher. Even though he's got a pretty good track record already, in, instead of bringing back captives from, from Damascus, he comes back a captive to Christ. But they don't trust him. And the Lord says, you need to withdraw for a while. And he actually takes him out into the desert of, 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 of uh, there and, and, and he spends about three years with the Lord. It's, it's very interesting. And, and later, he, he will, uh, his, his feeling about himself, he says, I'm, I'm, I'm the least of the apostles. Not just the last, I'm, I'm the least of the apostles, but yet I have worked even harder. And, and so I don't consider myself to, to be lacking in, in any category. So the enemy becomes the teacher. Not only did he become a teacher, he became the one that wrote most of our New Testament. God uses him in that way. How do we feel about things like that? I mean, here's Israel in the, in the Old Testament who, who's been a world-class example of unfaithfulness. Over and over and over again. And God says, but yet I've chosen you. And not only have I chosen you for right now, I've chosen you for eternity. That, that it's through you. It's through you. You're going to be the light. You're, you're going to bring the light. And, 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 and the whole world is, is going to know about me because of you. It wasn't because of their faithfulness at all. Because of God's faithfulness. Well, they, they soon forgot about other people, didn't they? They soon became so righteous in and of themselves when Jesus came, they, they didn't even want anything to do with Him. Remember the, the story of the Good Samaritan. What, what, what did the priest do whenever he sees somebody that, that, that's in need? Obviously in need. What did he do? He goes on the other side. What, what does the priest do? He goes on the other side of the road. He doesn't even tell people about it later so they can, they can send help back. And the apostles. Hmm. But they do, they do become who God wants them to be. They do become who God wants them to be. And they give their lives They've already given their life, but they give their lives in service to the Lord. And it was during their lifetime, 29 years. We have anyone here 29? Have anyone here 80? Anybody here 80? Any 80 year olds here? Stan, God so, are you hearing me? He's a. He's, he's our usher out, out. Stand God so. We're gonna have, as, soon as, I, as soon as I'm through and we have the, the closing song, we're going to have cake and we're going to celebrate his, his 80th year. 
Now, he may not even remember, be able to count to 80 right now. But he's, he's turned 80, and we're thankful for all the years of service that he's given. But within 29 years of the church beginning, God was able to say, through the Apostle Paul, to, to the young church at Colossae, He says, I, I'm, I'm an apostle. I've been chosen by the Lord as an apostle. And, and I've been sent to preach the Word which has been preached to the whole world. To every... I love the... You know how much I love the language of the Scripture. I hope you do too. He uses the same words that Jesus used in Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16, where Jesus says, go and preach the Gospel to every creature. When Paul is writing in Colossians chapter 1, God writing through Paul, he says, I'm, I'm a witness of this. That now every creature under heaven has, has heard. It's been preached. And, and, and they ev- uses the same words. Every creature. Every creature. 29 years. And we're not just talking about... My, I, I used to ask a lot of questions. And, and uh, I would ask my dad when I was growing up. And, and, and I, would, I would hear the, the, the Great Commission talked about. And then I would, would, would hear or read in Colossians chapter 1 where, where every creature had heard. And, and Paul says, that's, that's my testimony as an apostle of the Lord. I'm, I'm a witness of that. And, and it's happened 29 years. And, and, and I would say, you know, Daddy, how did they do that? And he said, I, I don't know. And, and, and grabbing, because see, we like to have answers, especially for our kids. We like to give them answers. When, when they ask questions, we want to be able to say, yeah. And, and, uh, but my kids quit asking me math questions because they knew I was, was, was not real good at math, at least as good as I should have been. And, and uh, you know, you remember when I was in the, the first grade that I thought two plus two was five. And, but my conviction was there. I, I was totally convicted. But we like to give them the right answers. And, and my dad would say, son, you know, some people say that that was that every, every creature in the known world had heard the Gospel. And, and we like to talk about the known world being North Africa and maybe taking in Ethiopia and then, and then you know, uh, from Babylon uh, back over through southern Europe and, and taking in Spain. And, and uh, we, you know, we talk about all of that around the Mediterranean, you know, the, the known world. And I, see, I was, too, I was too innocent to know not to ask more questions. I said, Daddy, what part of the world does God not know about? Because it's God that's speaking. It's not us that's speaking. Now, if it was us that was speaking, I could say, well, now I know that, that the gospel has been preached in, in India. I, I, I've been there, and I've participated in that. And, and in some in Africa, and I, I can tell you about that. And some down in Mexico, I can tell you about that. And in Alaska, yeah, and, and, and in Texas, and in Arkansas, I can tell you about those places. But the rest of the place, I don't know about. I hear about and and I believe the testimony. But I said, Daddy, what part of the world does God not know about? Well, since it's God speaking, you know, let Him tell us. Every creature. Every creature. You you put it together. Wow. And they didn't quit. They didn't quit. As many times as Israel failed, they there were still some who were faithful and they didn't stop until the time that God had chosen when Jesus was born. And even though the apostles were as different, they couldn't have been more different when Jesus brought them all together. They didn't let their differences keep them from accomplishing what needed to be done. And the whole world has heard. The question... Do we ever let differences keep us from working closely together? Have we let differences keep us from working in accomplishing the mission to the whole world? Have you ever been so frustrated with somebody or something that you just wanted to quit? Have you ever wanted to quit? Have you ever felt like just quitting? God's faithful. No matter how many times we're unfaithful, God is still faithful. He will still take us back. And He'll still give us the strength to accomplish His work. He'll take you back tonight. Whatever your needs might be. Come right now while we stand and sing.